So last night, I think I lost my patience. And I talked about the Vancouver Canucks in a pretty negative way because I was like, yeah, I don't want to play the LA Kings in the playoffs. Look at how the Canucks respond to the 1-3-1. It doesn't work. It's not entertaining. It's boring. It sucks. And I guess now is about high time to get back into the positive swing of things because we did have ourselves a few interesting notes from different players around the Vancouver Canucks organization that I thought were cool and that we can talk about here in today's video. Starting out with this. This graphic was posted yesterday onto the R Canucks sub, and it goes over a tweet made by Canucks Place on Twitter, talking about how Vancouver Canucks forward Nils Hoglander has more 5v5 goals than Connor McDavid, William Nylander, Leon Dreisaitl, Kyle Connor, Nikita Kucherov, Sidney Crosby, Kirill Kaprizov, Jason Robertson, Connor Bedard, Jake Gensel, and Brady Kafreaking Chuck. Oh my goodness. Now, when you think about the list like this, it's a lot easier to say, wait a minute, like, that is a crazy list. How the hell does Niels Hoglander have that many gosh darn goals compared to everybody else? And that's the thing. This list, of course, is not taking into account all of the other situations. It doesn't take into account power play, everything else. You could say it's not even technically even strength, because sometimes even strength isn't really 5v5 necessarily. So for Niels Hoglander to be one of the top guys in the NHL to have 5v5 goal production for Firstly, we know it leads the team. Like, he's outscoring everybody else in the Vancouver Canucks in terms of this metric. But to see these names, I mean, Dreisaitl, McDavid, Kucherov, Robertson, even some of the newer guys like Connor Bedard, like, Niels Hoglander is one of these absolute dogs at 5v5. Even strength play is where he comes and shows up, and it's been a sight to behold for the Vancouver Canucks. In fact, here it is, the 5v5 goal production leaders in the National Hockey League. And for some reason, the table keeps on loading here, but Zach Hyman does lead the National Hockey League in even strength goals with 33. Nils Hoglander is down there at 22. He is tied with Miko Rantanen, which is astounding. All these other guys, I mean, look, JJ Paterka is kind of a surprise to see him there. Trevor Moore, Jordan Cairo, some of these guys you may not expect to be near the top of the 5v5 goal list, but JT Miller is here as well with 17. Hoglander, though, literally a top 10 player tied with Rantanen for one of the best 5v5 goal production records this season. So good on Nils Hoglander for being able to do this. Now, when it comes to Canucks players performing well, there was another stat that I wanted to go out there and talk about because the NHL tweeted this out earlier today. Take a look at the top goaltenders of the week with a minimum of three games played sorted by goals against average. Casey DeSmith, despite the few losses that were thrown in there, had himself the highest goals against average between goalies above three games played this week, which is awesome because the Vancouver Canucks have themselves a tandem that is legitimately good, not just in Thatcher Demko, but in Casey DeSmith too. He's been on a run of games so far. He's started, what is it now, five in a row, something like that. In fact, let's go over to his game log. Casey DeSmith game log, and we'll see where exactly everything has gone here. So yeah, Casey DeSmith in the past few days has started, let's just say, okay, Colorado, Washington. Yeah, it's been six games in a row here for Casey DeSmith, and his goals against being as low as it is, 1-6-7, that's honestly really solid. And when you think about it, I mean, 4-3, okay, that may not be ideal, in the grand scheme of a goals against average number, two goals against in the Washington Capitals game, two against in Buffalo, one against in Montreal, two against against the Flames, and then three against the LA Kings. So just barely over one, under two as well. That is a really good number. He's the only guy with an under two goals against average in the past week with a minimum of three games. Jake Ottinger, Cal Pickard, and Samuel Ayrson rounding out these top lists as well. Casey DeSmith now has himself a total production of 901 in his last five games played and 875 in his last 10. And if you go over to the numbers, his 899 save percentage honestly is a little bit misleading because in the past month or so, he has had a 908 save percentage. Seven games played in March, 908 save percentage, 201 goals against. That's a really good set of numbers. The save percentage may not be too high up there, but the goals against average certainly is, which is awesome to see. I mean, 
take a look at some of these games here. This is why the save percentage numbers aren't really great. He let in two goals against the Sabres, which is good, but he had only 17 shots a game, so the save percentage was at 8.82. Same thing could be probably repeated here for the LA game. Only let in three goals, but he had 19 shots a game, so an 8.42 save percentage is his record there. Not necessarily the best save percentage number, but still, the goals against is solid. Which kind of spells a little bit of misleading into this stat, but hey, it's whatever, he's still there. Casey DeSmith has been showing off a lot of value ever since Thatcher Demko left the lineup with an injury. Hopefully, once the playoffs comes back, Casey DeSmith doesn't need to play. Not that he shouldn't or that he's bad, but because if Thatcher Demko is starting the entire run, then that would be best case scenario, right? Now, going over onto the final thing in regards to the Vancouver Canucks, we had ourselves another update in regards to Jonathan Lekaramaki, because he says that he'll be with the Abbotsford Canucks for two to three weeks. Head coach Jeremy Colleton said he wasn't sure if Lekaramaki would get into a game this weekend, and that the next step is for the Canucks' top prospect to get comfortable. So with this in mind, we have ourselves an even stronger timeline for Le Karamaki to be with the Abbotsford Canucks and to adjust with their system. We already saw some video footage, actually, of Le Karamaki practicing. I think it was tweeted out by Quadrelli, actually, himself. But if you go over to Twitter and you take a look at some of these things here, you'll see some videos of Le Karamaki doing some drills, and he's in the bumper spot, and he's already there, he's at the rank, he's doing his thing. It's been pretty good, and honestly, this could be a very good sign for Le Karamaki's development, whether or not he does get a game or two with the Abbotsford Canucks. Dave Hall went out there and said that, yeah, that the timing has gotten extended, which is a game changer. Perhaps we'll see Jonathan Le Karamaki suit up after all, before he leaves the team, goes over to Sweden, and tries out for their team Sweden World Championship squad. It's going to be awesome to see. Honestly, if he's able to at least get a game in the Abbotsford Canucks, that's like already a big step. But if he's able to get a game and let's say he scores a really nice snipe, that would be best grounds for excitement with this prospect. Because for the Karamaki, there's really nothing more that he can accomplish in Europe, I feel, aside from this World Championship stint. So next year and beyond, hopefully it is AHL full-time for the Karamaki. We have seen as well with the Abbotsford Canucks, Elias Pedersen suiting up in some practices here and there. He hasn't played a game yet, but he's a part of the organization. So just seeing these three extra dudes in Pedersen, Christian Felton, the NCAA signing, and then the Karamaki being a part of the roster and practicing with the team. Not to mention Phil Kessel too. He was a part of this practice roster as well, but he's not really you know, relevant anymore. It's going to be great to see how Le Karamaki is able to adjust with the Vancouver Canucks AHL affiliate. But for now, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Firstly, about Nils Hoglander's crazy 5v5 goal production, outproducing some of the best names in the entire NHL. What are your thoughts on Casey DeSmith being one of the best goaltenders in the NHL the past week in terms of goals against average? And what are your thoughts on Le Karamaki getting a little bit more of an extended time period with the Abbotsford Canucks? I hope you enjoyed this video, Shadow Scrolls 99, and bye.